and we're back with the second episode of Rockman EP. Since we've actually gotten some uh, money from killing the last boss, let's go to the shop. As you can see, there's a uh, few things on sale. We've even got a value pack. That's oh, nice. Man. We can buy seven beat calls, an S tank, weapon tanks, E tanks, lives, and if we have 9,999 bolts for some reason, we can get a special thing. Why didn't you buy the S tank for two bucks? Because we can find them in levels just kind of falling all over the place. That's only three nines, though. It wasn't four nines. It's not the Final Fantasy cap. It's the uh, Breath of Fire cap. Are, are these names randomly generated for the stages, or why was the last one called Texas Sandwich? I think that was just a thing <laughs> of thing about Shade Man. It's just supposed to tell you something about him. Shade Man is... <laughs> So this is our uh, Spring Man's level, which appears to be a uh, Freeze Man's level. But we have a gigantic uh, wind effect that's over the entire stage. Hooray. Wait. No. Good extra wind. And if we get caught by these guys, we get thrown. <laughs> it can be kind of nice. There are good Donkey Kong Country 2 levels. There's also bad ones. <laughs> are they just... Are these wind enemies just annoying, or do they actually do interesting things like the Megmatix 1 uh, launch octopus fish? Eh, they can do interesting things, but this level's more about introducing them for now. Oh my god, up and down going shield attack as now I've seen everything. They can actually box you in pretty effectively later on. Mm -hmm. But here's our first sort of introduction to them. And invisible and uh, Yoku blocks, but these ones are nice because they're not actually solid at all. Aren't they in the original as well? I thought you could jump through them in Mega Man Seven Vanilla. No, I'm pretty sure they were. That was they only just like zipped you upwards if you got caught in them. It's possible. So nothing to the right. No, nothing to the right, unfortunately. Convenience. Yeah. But I think the original uh, 7 also had some issues like that. Is your special weapon good against any of these enemies here, or just... Uh, actually, no, because Ripple Noise is so big, the uh, what? Tornado what? Men don't what? get hit what? by it. What? what the hell? Well, remember how we were talking ah. about Donkey Kong Country before? It gave you oh. Oh. We're actually in Animal Antics now. We're playing Squawks' Please. section. Oh no. God damn it, Squawks. He even brought the bees in. Oh. It, oh dear. Is this like. Oh. Is this a one for one from that section? No, it's. I think it's more just like a condensed version. Well, there is no wind, so it's immediately better. Simon, I would ask that you hold your comments for a little bit. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I know the. Uh, that section from Animal Antics was. I think the one that people hated most in the entire game. <laughs> yeah, it is really bad. That was the one with the random wind that would shove you back and forth, and you had to know it was coming or you would just die. It's not so much random, uh, it's periodically, but it's, Quarks is so hard to control anyway. I think the biggest problem I personally have is that the checkpoint is <laughs> after the next section. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the biggest thing that kills people. Yeah. And now we're at that section of uh, Animal Antics. <laughs> oh, dear. At least the, the spikes did instant kill you, right? Before. No, now they just do like... I think it's like something like 12 damage. <laughs> One third of your health. Wonder, I wonder if Beat's gonna make a... <laughs> Which is still more than... Sorry, still better than one of your two hits. Why is the hitbox so small? Not amazing. But hey, there we go. We've beaten Animal Antics, and we even got extra health for it. Oh, that's kind of cute, though. <laughs> There's a lot of use of the helpers in this game. Why didn't you just drive me over here? Oh, I like that. It, it didn't seem that bad, to be quite honest. And now we're back in Mega Man 2. <laughs> it's the cold dog. Yeah. These are some very easy hot dogs. Oh, it's a cold dog. <laughs> I like it's that you even man, uh, bothered to uh, model the uh, ceiling like in Mega Man 2. How do you dodge that? Basically, how the falling spikes work is that the first four fall on you, and then the next couple will fall ahead of you. So, essentially, if you stop moving after the fourth, you should be able to dodge it. Uh, maybe. Like that. Ah. Uh, a bit hard to sight read. 
And I mean, there's a lot of stuff in this game, apparently. Yeah, I mean, part of the problem is that it's you only have half the screen real estate mm -hmm. to work with. It's a bit chaotic. But it's not too much of an issue, because just staying on the left will actually dodge half his attacks. Does it mean anything that the uh, top row of the health bar of most enemies uh, flashes? Uh, the flash actually means they have double health. Uh, I knew it. This looks comfy, the water. Yep, this is our oh, hot yeah. spring section, so I guess we're underground next to like a volcano. You know that I completely forgot which stage we are in Springman, right? Yeah. I thought this was Forced of Illusion 3. Oh, I get it, hot springs. There oh we go. God. <laughs> That's why the trees were pink. We're in a Japanese hot spring. And you just did a Mario, so that makes sense with the Forest of Illusion combat. Yeah, those those turtle shells can actually kill pretty much anything they hit. That's amazing. Also, this is Mario Galaxy. Mm -hmm. And this is our uh, first section, where we simply fall down, but we get a free E tank for it, so whatever. Can you like dodge upwards? You can jump. Uh, but your yeah. movement is uh, based entirely on recoil, so you just shoot back and forth. This is like my favorite part of Mega Man 9. Did they actually have a falling section in Mega Man 9? I don't think they did. Falling, no, but the recoil, I mean. Oh, yeah. That's a bit slow for my taste, actually, this one here. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think this is supposed to get you used to it, but at the same time, he's filled it with a bunch of, like, dangerous enemies like these electric guys where if they shoot you they reverse your controls oh my god this is an absolute no-go for me if you want to get people used to it you just make it easier you don't make it slower yeah but it's also i think with pure save everything has to also be really cool so it's like look at how incredibly complex this was and how difficult it was to do uh, okay. Yeah, that's also one of my biggest problems with Minus Infinity. Like, it's really cool in a sense, but it's is it fun to play always? Not really? <laughs> Just put in a scripted thingy at the end. Where the player doesn't have to interact with your overwrought set piece if they don't want to. No. That's just not, that's not negotiable. I mean, that is Rob Hex in general. I put a lot of work in and you better experience it the way I want you to experience it or you won't get to play my video game. Exactly that. It's completely understandable. It's still like, you know, the value of restraint is undervalued. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is entirely true. Also, you should use the special weapons. I will. But it's so, this area is so small and weirdly shaped. I feel like it would be unfair. What do you mean unfair? You're playing a ROM hack. <laughs> <laughs> what are you getting at? <laughs> Does not compute. Is there something funky about the special weapons you don't want to tell us? <laughs> well, there's funky things about a couple of them, but we're actually pretty much done with the level now. This is our final challenge and it doesn't have any enemies in it. Ah, the rising action before the climax. So since you were uh, complaining about it being kind of slow... Yeah, that's far better. Uh, that's... yeah, that's quicker. Oh uh, yeah, micromanagement. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. I mean, the hitbox seems generous enough, like it's not the entire bubble. Uh oh you lost control. Oh, yeah, well. now we could heal our way through this, but the funny thing is, we don't actually have to, because we're done. Wow, Ray. that's nice. Uh, yeah, the last part uh, seemed like the promised shit from a horse. <laughs> <laughs> and now, just in case you didn't get it, we have us interrupting Springman's bath time. Oh my god, that means he's still naked. <laughs> That's why it's a hot spring. So as a note, uh, I think you're supposed to fight Springman first because this is really easy. Well, I mean, you have double health. That is true, but I'm also not even dodging. He does have this, Wait. which does have some bite to it. If a, if Springman was bathing, wouldn't he rust? He's made out of metal. Eh, it's not anodizing. It's fine. Uh, we interrupted him before he could fully restore, you know, HP, EP, assault points, CP. <laughs> Though now we do have one of the best weapons in the game, this spring thing. It always was the best weapon in the game, come on. It was not. 
<laughs> for anyone asks, no, I haven't found a super special secret use for a wild coin. <laughs> well, I mean, it bounces higher and does slightly extra damage to uh, Wily Capsule. There's that. Bracioli. But that's not secret. I've always loved Wily's little sneer in these password portraits. That's great, if only it wasn't such a pain in the fucking universe to put it in. Now, I will have to actually make a confession here. That was not his weakness. I just liked it because I think it's funny killing him with that thing. <laughs> How dare you trick us like this. I'm sorry. So you could have used the weapon all the time. It's not like that boss was hard. No, he's very springy. <laughs> 